quickly. I want to quickly touch upon this. I'm not usually I'm not somebody to post screenshots of my own tweets, but I thought because I was the only person that kind of was able to pull this reference and make this correlation, I thought it might be beneficial to put it up on the screen. So please forgive the narcissistic um display here that I'm now, you know, subjecting you to, but it is what it is. So I was perusing the timeline and I know happened to notice this Instagram tweet that somebody posted. Um, it was a screenshot taken from the lovely Taylor Lorenz where she was talking about the Amber Heard v. Johnny Depp case. And for whatever reason, again, I haven't been paying attention to the Amber Heard Johnny Depp case. I think it's irrelevant for the wide majority of the public. Yes, it's a soap opera, but essentially it's two very toxic people who shouldn't have been together at all or should have broke it off way before it got to the point that it's got to basically, um, you know, shouting at each other in court through lawyers. Um, whoever's guilty, whoever's innocent, whatever, go on with your life, but it's not nothing to really get our teeth sunk into. I think, in my opinion, they're both as bad as each other to varying degrees, but it's not something that I'm going to be overly, you know, invested in. But for whatever reason, in the last few weeks, no, so for the entire narrative, if you've been watching for afar, has been that Amber Heard is like a manipulative, evil person, right, who had basically used her femininity, her womanhood as a mask for her abuse to Johnny Depp and sometimes you know in domestic violence cases or in just you know issues concerning men and women um usually if it's a victim it's usually always a woman and if you are a woman and you say something happened to you people always believe you straight up but in this case it sounds like by the things I've been looking from the outside in that this might be one of those rare cases where Johnny Depp was the one who was a victim of abuse and Amber Heard was the abuser but she's obviously been hiding behind the womanhood thing cool and maybe her looks whatever it may be and for the entire for the entire time of the court case, that's been the, the 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 running narrative that Amber Heard is a horrible person. Cool, no problem with that. I don't really care about either of them. But for whatever reason, in the last few weeks, the narrative has now switched, where some of these people on the left, these like radical leftists and stuff, are now starting to sympathise with Amber Heard and say that she's actually a victim in this. And just because, and just because, um, you know, she's a victim in this even though whatever she's done is bad, that, that Johnny Depp is still maybe worse. But then there's another narrative in this now, which Taylor Lorenz says in this screenshot, where she essentially says in this tweet, abuse is about power and she didn't have the power. I don't think a lot of people don't understand that abusive relationships actually look like. Julia Fox put it well. Um, so essentially she's saying that just because Johnny Depp is a man doesn't mean... No, no, she don't. Sorry. What she's basically trying to say is that in this relationship, because Johnny Depp was the more famous person, that he has power over her in that case to abuse her. And she was like a little kind of scrappy actress coming up. That's what I think she's essentially saying. But Julia Fox basically elaborates on that, or you know, made her own point, I guess, on Instagram, where she says, wrong. She never had the power in a relationship to be abusive. So you can't be abusive if you don't have power in a relationship. This is what Julia Fox is saying. Did she hit him? Yes. Was it abuse? No, because she's a girl, I guess. Um, you need to have power to have able to abuse people. She was 25. He clearly was a way, always way more powerful, including physically and financially. So because Johnny Depp is older, not his fault. Because he's a man, not his fault. Um, because he's successful, not his fault. It means that he has to be the abuser in his relationship, even though all the evidence is pointing towards Amber Heard being abusive in her own way. Whether it's not all abuse, whether it's not all physical, it might be some mental, whatever it may be. Just strange, bizarre. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. But this is the narrative people are spinning with. So Julia Fox is kind of waving that kind of victimhood uh, flag and, you know, right on top of her head and really scream from the rooftops that Amber Heard is also a victim in this, which is absolutely nutty. But let's just continue. I thought that was really interesting for her to say because then the very next week or, you know, the presiding days, wherever it may have been, there was this um, engineered photo shoot paparazzi thing that she's doing in the style of what Kanye was doing with, with his Yeezy Supply um, company, a clothing brand, sorry, where she kind of gets paparazzi to come and take pictures of her while she's running errands and whatnot, where she's looking amazing, obviously, right? Um, great outfit, all denim with the flipping uh, little bikini set on with the knee-high boots but according to people online this outfit is sponsored by none other than alexander wang and i'm just thinking if you're julia fox and you're advocating for victims 
or you're saying that Amber Heard is a victim in this because she was a person who didn't have power in this, even though all the evidence is pointing towards her manipulating and controlling Joan Depp to some certain extent. Who knows what it is really, but I don't really care. I haven't looked at it too deeply. But essentially, you are taking a position of the minority out there who have, you know, uh, the ability to deduce things that are going on with a rational mind and you're now saying that Amber Heard's a victim which is fine so if you're going to be victimhood person how can you then wear Alexander Wang clothing knowing full well what he did when he was coming up right no what, what he did a few what was it months ago and if you want to reflect a uh, refresher on that this is an article courtesy of instinct and it said did Alexander, did Alexander Wang's lawsuit get dropped um uh, the yesterday fashion designer Alexander Wang released a statement and apology over the sexual assault and harassment allegations placed against him. Da, da, da. So if you remember, there was a time when several peak, several male models on TikTok basically came out with stories and accounts of Alexander Wang being extremely, extremely sexually aggressive um, around the fashion scene, whether it was after shows, after parties. And in one occasion, or I think in a couple of instances, there was alleged instances of him dousing or dosing some of the guys drinks with mdma ketamine and some other stuff right this is what i remember i'm not sure my, my brain's fuzzy again it's all alleged and allegedly these guys woke up and you know something had happened or whatever it may have been which are really troubling and disturbing allegations to put against somebody but for whatever reason whatever financial backing alexander wang had still had it his ability to you know to have his stuff showcased on vogue runway is still there he's still stocked by some of the biggest stores in the world all this stuff happened so it was very interesting and weird reaction towards a pretty serious allegation but of course we know why that happened because it involves men if it, Alexander Wang would have done this to some young girls coming up in the industry, the reaction would have been completely different. But because he's doing it to guys uh, who may who may or may not be gay, but essentially they're men, it's not such a big issue. It's not such a big deal. On top of that, the other disappointing fact about it was that I guess these victims um, ended up meeting up again. And this is, this is um, a quote from Lisa Bloom. Ended up meeting up with Alexander Wang and his representative and ended up, I guess, um, coming to an amicable conclusion, which you would imagine would be the De Niro, the pounds, the money, the whatever it may be, the dollars, and ended up dropping any kind of legal proceedings that they were going to take against him. Maybe it was because they maybe thought they couldn't prove it in the court of law because it might be in the he should see said. I'm not really too sure but that was a disappointing thing to see that these victims who clearly had went through a very traumatic experience with Alexander Wang would take the easy route out but again they're the victims if they choose to take the easy route out then it is what it is we have to move on but this was an actual thing that happened you don't you know agree to meet victims and acknowledge your fault in this like he did in the statement or whatever it may be no he didn't acknowledge fault really he didn't did he a number of individuals come forward recently to raise claims against me and regarding my past my past personal behavior very clever there i support their right to come forward and i've listened to carefully to what they have to say i was not easy for me to share these stories um for them sorry and i regret acting in a way that caused them pain so acknowledgement of it, he did do it so i guess this, this might have been part of the this might have been part of the agreement that they had he comes out and acknowledges he did it and then they kind of get a nice kind of golden handshake to move on but this actually did happen right lisa bloom came out the lawyer for this victim and said we met that as on the wang and his team my counsel's opportunity to speak to him their truth to him and express their pain and hurt we acknowledge mr wang's apology and we are moving forward and we have no further comment on this matter so clearly some sort of golden handshake lisa bloom doesn't do anything for free and then you've got Julia Fox over here parading in this outfit courtesy of Alexander Wang. So I just think to myself, when it comes to these people who profess to be social justice warriors, who profess, who profess to be you know, advocates for victims, usually they're full of bullshit. Usually they are laden here with hypocrisy, but that's not really an issue for me. I think we are all hypocrites to a certain extent. I know I am. I've got my stings, right? But for the most part, we wear hypocrisy on our chest. We know we're full of shit and we don't try and pretend we're not. But with these people, they think they walk on water. They legitimately think that the positions they're holding are somewhat you know um that that kind of separate them from everybody else right that make them hallowed that make them reasoned monsters that make them clear-eyed people who really see what's going on for what is going on but essentially they're as blinded and they're as ideologically possessed as most of us are anyway in our own ways 
but they just won't admit it and just be upfront with it. But in general, I just think if you want to stand on victimhood and you actually want to be an ally, you have to go all the way through. You can't be supporting people like Alexander Wang if you're going to be just adv advocating for Amber Heard being a victim of abuse. You just can't do that. I just don't think it's right and I just think it's full of hypocrisy and obviously represents you in a really bad light. And again, it's out of order because I actually like Judith Fox. I think her ability to turn the little bit of light that she got from, um, you know, from obviously Uncut Gems and then kind of fast forwarding into meeting um, Kanye and that world in romance. I legitimately think her ability to stretch that five minutes into whatever this is now is truly remarkable. And I think her understanding of media, her manipulation of it, her performance art nature of it is really something to be um, respected and sort of like, you know, kind of you have to kind of tip your hat to her in that respect for doing it because in this industry that we're in at the moment in this game currently this is kind of the name of the game if you're not in front of camera if you're not keeping yourself in the news um circuit or whatever it may be you might as well not be alive and considering that she is an a actress and she is somebody that maybe wants to kind of go into other fields it maybe is beneficial to keep doing these kind of things so again i rate the girl i like her but she's full of shit that's basically the point